So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make my version of a quadrifiller antenna for the uh, higher frequencies, the 5.8 gigahertz. Now, a few people have uh, asked over the last few months if I uh, have ever seen this antenna before and have I had a go at actually making it. Now, what I can say is I uh, have been looking at this antenna on and off for probably getting on for five years now. And uh, there are a couple of websites, uh, in particular one, I can't remember the guy's name, but he did a lot of uh, research on uh, making one of these for 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. But uh, unfortunately, it seems he was probably a student at the time and then he uh, got a job and uh, just never went back to finish it off. And uh, the problem with actually making one of these is it's really, really difficult, if not impossible, to wire it up for the higher frequencies, how they are actually wired up for the lower frequencies. You just can't get the uh, coax to actually run up and down like you can when uh, you know you're making it out of something like uh, you know 25 millimeter tubing for instance but uh, this uh, little design that i've come up with takes uh, a lot of the benefits that you get with the uh, quadrifiller antenna and uh, allows us to use them for the higher frequencies without the uh, added complication of trying to wire it up so it is actually uh, circular polarized it has four lobes and uh, basically they're all similar to a closed loop kind of uh, setup here we've got the uh, top part actually soldered on here and then it loops around it's actually half a turn and then it's soldered back down to the ground plane on the coax and also to actually make this work for uh, 5.8 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz it really needs a uh, small balance so there's also a balance actually uh, built in on the uh, stem of the coax down here that really needs to be put in place if you don't put that in place you get uh, too much reflected waves back down the transmission line and it really impairs the performance of the antenna so this antenna does have a couple of benefits over something like a uh, cloverleaf antenna it's uh, circular polarized as i say so it's really suited for something like uh, FPV, but uh, it has a lot more gain than a cloverleaf antenna, so it uh, really is a uh, worthwhile antenna to actually uh, have a go and make. So let's get the tools out then, and I'll show you how to actually uh, make one of these for yourself. Now as for the copper wire to actually make the elements of this antenna, I've uh, got my copper wire out of a uh, multi-core earth wire that you can see here and the thickness of this is around 20 21 swg so i've got my four lengths of copper wire here i've already cut them out to 51.7 millimeters long and that's uh, one full wavelength at 5.8 gigahertz and uh, i've used the straw method again to actually measure each one of these out just uh, actually uh, cut the straw to length at uh, 51.7 millimeters and then use that uh, with some side cutters to just trim each length of copper wire to the correct length so next we're going to mark off where we're going to put a right angle bend on the uh, ends of each copper wire and uh, you want to measure off 6.5 millimeters and uh, the best way to actually do this is uh, because the measurements are so small my uh, marker pen here is quite thick so it's probably two or almost three millimeters thick so the best way to do it is to actually uh, use your marker pen not putting a mark here like this actually put it on the copper wire and uh, actually color in all the section that's uh, 6.5 millimeters so I know then to actually just come in here and book my needle nose pliers up to put that uh, right angle bend in there it's a lot more accurate that way so once you've got all your ends marked off we're going to put some right angle bends in now and I'm using my needle nose pliers here they've got a really nice flat surface on the side here so I can bend the copper wire to a nice right angle so i'm going to put my pliers in the correct position just on the edge of that green line and then i'm going to put a bend in like so and i'm going to do the other side but it's going to be opposite so i'll get it butted up like that and then i'm going to bend in that direction so we've got that kind of shape and you need to do that to all four elements 
So this is all four elements ready to actually uh, be bent and soldered into place and uh, the ends of them what I've done I've cleaned off the uh, marker pen and I've also got a little bit of emery paper and just roughed them up a little bit just on the ends just so it makes it a little bit easier to actually solder. Now we're going to put the uh, bends into the elements next and you're going to have to find yourself something uh, similar to this. This is a uh, plastic tube that contained uh, solder and uh, the diameter of this tube is 15 millimeters. So if you could find yourself a piece of wooden dowel that's 15 millimeters in diameter, that would probably work just as well. But uh, I had this tube lying around and uh, what I've actually done, I've drilled a hole just at the top here and uh, I've measured down from that hole 20 millimeters down to the base here so we're going to be inserting the element into that small hole and then bending it around this tubing. Now to put the bends in each element you actually need to decide whether you're going to do a left hand polarized one or a right hand. I'm going to do a right hand one here but for the left hand you just do it the uh, opposite way around your little uh, bending tool here so I've got one end through the hole that I've already drilled in the side and I'm going to bend it nice and evenly around the tube like so and then I want this end to actually come in so it's pointing inwards just like uh, the one on the other side is and then once you've got your bending like that you can just go in and just tidy it up a little bit to try and get it nice and even through the middle of the tube itself. And once you're happy with it you can just actually remove it off the bending tool and you can do the same with the remaining three elements. So I'm going to start soldering the elements in place to some semi-rigid coax and uh, this is uh, 100 millimeters long which should be plenty long enough to actually connect it to say your quadcopter and bend it in the middle to get it at the right angle and uh, I've also started to prepare it here I've uh, trimmed away about uh, four millimeters of the uh, outer braid here to expose that inner core and uh, I've pre-tinned that and I've also pre-tinned round here round its uh, waist and uh, that is actually uh, 20 millimeters from the tip here down to uh, where I've actually uh, pre-tinned with solder and I've also pre-tinned the ends of uh, each one of these elements. Now to solder the elements in place what you actually want to do is solder the bottom leg in place first and uh, go around and get all four elements soldered in place and then the top one you want to do all four at once if you try and solder it here starting off at the top here the uh, surface area is so small every time you uh, apply your solder iron one of them will fall off so you've got a much bigger surface area around the uh, waist of the coax here so solder all those legs on first and then uh, get them all nice and straight and then solder all the top legs on in one go and to actually hold the elements in place while I solder these legs on I've got these uh, pliers here they're actually on a spring so they're closed by themselves because uh, the heat will just travel up and uh, burn your fingers before it's actually soldered in place. And uh, as always pre-tinning is the uh, key to actually get this right so I've just got a big lump of solder on the end of my iron here and while I'm holding it in place with the tweezers I'll just go in and start to get that solder flowing on that bottom leg. So that's the first bottom leg soldered in place so I'm just going to go around and do the rest. And I find it much easier if you actually solder on the two opposing legs first and then when you've got those two soldered in place do the other two. It's just a lot easier to actually uh, space it out that way and get it all nice and uniform. So once you've got them all soldered in place just go around and give each one a little tug just to make sure that it is actually uh, soldered in place nice and firm there and uh, visually check that you've got no wispy bits of solder actually bridging down to the outer braid here so just generally go around and check each one. And also go around and uh, just visually check each element just to make sure they're all nice and evenly spaced out between each other. And if you do find one that's a little bit close to the next one, just give it a little uh, bend in the opposite direction. 
Now because this antenna is based in part on a uh, helical design it's actually going to need a ballon. Now I've got a piece of uh, copper wire here the same diameter I've made the elements from and I've uh, measured off here a uh, distance which is half a wavelength long and that is 25.85 millimeters and I need to actually bend it around this uh, heat shrink tubing that I've put on here because uh, I need some heat shrink tubing there because I don't want it actually shorting out directly to the uh, outer braid of this uh, semi-rigid coax and I'm going to be soldering it onto the base here so I've got some metal rod here that's uh, five millimeters in diameter it's just slightly bigger diameter than the uh, semi-rigid coax so it'll fit over the uh, semi-rigid coax and the uh, heat shrink tubing and uh, I've actually marked it off in the middle of the wire here so that will allow me to actually start the bender off back here and then I can uh, bend it and twist it around this uh, copper rod here and then we can snip it off at those two points when we've actually got it bent like a corkscrew. So I've got the coil bent into shape and I can just cut it off here and here now and it's just much easier to bend around that uh, rod if you uh, actually start giving yourself a, a little bit of waste on either side. If you try to actually start right here at the end it wouldn't quite bend around properly it would be much uh, more difficult to actually get it nice and neat. So I've got the little coil ballon in place here I've just tinned up the uh, end of that uh, coil there where I'm going to solder it into so it's just going to be soldered on to the base of the uh, bottom elements down here and then of course that coil just wraps around the coax isolated from this outer braid and that will act as our uh, little ballon to bring it back down to 50 ohms and when you've soldered it in place just make sure that uh, it is only touching in that one spot where you've actually soldered it in place and what I'm going to do now is just put a little bit more heat shrink tubing over that ballon just to protect it and hold it in place. So here's a uh, closer look at it then before I actually uh, paint it so you can see how the elements are spaced out there. And uh, I've also gone with some epoxy putty and uh, put it around the uh, solder joints top and bottom just to uh, add a little bit more protection in case it takes a whack. It uh, should give it a bit more strength than just the solder alone. So here is the uh, Quadra filler with its uh, paint on there and uh, one thing I will note though if you're going to build this to uh, use on your quadcopter you are probably going to be bending it in the middle here to get it at the right angle so just uh, don't paint it like I have in the middle here otherwise this will start flaking and it'll look pretty messy pretty quickly. So as most of you know I uh, can't actually test this on the uh, 5.8 gigahertz frequency but uh, I have put it into uh, the alpha card and I've put a uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal through it and uh, I'm pretty impressed how this actually works to be honest it's uh, it's not a bad little antenna so theoretically then this antenna should perform much better than a uh, cloverleaf antenna. Its dB gain is a lot higher. The dB gain of this is around uh, 8 dB. So for an omnidirectional antenna, that's not bad at all. And uh, remember, it is circularly polarized, so it's a direct competitor to the uh, cloverleaf antenna. So uh, if you do have a go at making one of these, uh, you know, feed back in the comments and let us know how you actually got on and how you actually found it out there in the uh, real world using it on your uh, FPV set. Setup. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you did, please uh, give it a thumbs up as always. And uh, any questions, I'll do my best to help you. Drop them below and, uh, you know, maybe I or maybe somebody else can actually uh, answer it for you. And uh, if you do have a go at building one of these, please feed back to us and let us know how you actually got on. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.